So in this sports file edition we're going to be talking about one of the lost or forgotten superstars of the Quebec Nordiques. Now Jacques Richard when he entered the NHL was considered one of the top young prospects in the early 1970s. But except for a single season late in his career, he never panned out to the potential that uh, scouts and fans and teammates had for him. Uh, he he uh, led a troubled life in hockey, uh, going on and off the ice, because he infamously he was uh, arrested for trying to smuggle 1.2 million dollars worth of cocaine in 1989, received multiple years in prison, and when he got out, he was on the straight and narrow, unfortunately. In 2002, on the uh, 50th uh, birthday party afterwards, he died in a car accident coming back from the celebration. Now, we remember, uh, you know, the, the French Connection and the other players of that era, but it was mostly uh, uh, the uh, Quebec uh, major influence that uh, helped Jacques' uh, career uh, come off. He was. Uh, as a youth, he, he drew a lot of interest at the 64 and 65 Quebec International Peewee Hockey Tournament. Uh, had a great uh, campaign with the Beavers. Um, but with the Quebec Ramparts, which actually was Guy Lafleur's uh, fellow junior squad, he scored uh, 186 goals and 230, 230 assists for almost 400 points in only 169 games for the franchise. He played with a super line with Guy, uh, Guy Chouinard and, uh, and Andre Savard, uh, which uh, still is considered one of the best Francophone lines in Quebec uh, Major Junior history. And uh, they were also considering him as a possible teammate or augmentation for uh, Guy Lafleur. Uh, now, it didn't pan out, and he was eventually selected by the, uh, the franchise uh, Atlanta Flames uh, after a coin toss determined if he was going to go to Atlanta or New York. Now, uh, because the Billy Harris was also in the mix as well, they became the immediate negotiations. But even the, the, the first season in Atlanta didn't really uh, live up to expectation. He had less than 30 goals. He had difficulty in defensive situations. He struggled on the power play. Uh, and someone t uh, told me many, many years ago, maybe where Jacques Richard's problems started in Atlanta because he felt that, you know, he uh, didn't feel welcome there, and uh, you know, uh, and his uh, agent said, you know, he was a mixed-up kid. He uh, he was quite young, and he didn't really uh, uh, know how to deal with the pressure of being a, a big player. Now, in his second season, he was paired with Tom Laziak, uh, which which was a, a great uh, offensive player for the Flames, and he scored uh, 27 goals. But unfortunately, in the start of the '74 season. Uh, he had uh, some uh, physical problems. He was almost had his uh, face smashed off in an ice on ice incident, and um, he started to lose his defensive uh, play. Uh, offensive scoring was not there as well. And after three years, Atlanta was traded with the Buffalo Sabers, and some felt going to Buffalo with his French Canadian influence would help Richard. But uh, unfortunately, uh, Richard's poor work ethic became a problem as well. Rumor has it that um, uh, Gilbert Perot and some of the other players on the team said, you know, you got to pick up your game or you're not going to continue with the squad. Uh, Richard had rumors of problems with drink yet again. Uh, and on one occasion where he would cause problems in public, he almost missed getting shot and shot to death in a Quebec bar because when the, the guy shot at him, the bullet went through his leg. Now, uh, Punch Emlach was a big fan of Jacques Richard. But he also felt that you know he was wasting his talent. And uh, with Buffalo, he spent the next five seasons up and down between uh, Buffalo and Hershey. And uh, in February 1980, actually Buffalo terminated a contract, which led him to free to sign with another team. Now, as soon as he was released, the Quebec Nordiques uh, made contact with him, and he spent most of the 80-81 season when he was signed playing with a line with Peter and Anton Stashing. Now this was uh, Richard's best year, and I saw him play that year. It was probably comparable to Steve Shutter or Mike Gartner. He had 103 uh, points that year, including 52 goals, and uh, he was 10th overall in points. But this was a one-year wonder, and eventually, the same problems on ice, uh, off ice with drink and with the wrong people, tend to follow him. Now uh, the misfortunes 
it's been published reports that Richard was in the wrong group of people in Quebec, uh, especially since the Nordiques, it became more evident there were things going on. Now, the smuggling of the cocaine, some people say 1.2, I've seen as high as 1.5. And he was looking at life in prison, actually, because he would really throw the book for that type of cocaine possession and distribution, but he got seven years in jail. But after he was released, uh, he seemed to be going on a straight and narrow, but like any bad situations uh, that follow you, maybe the, the curse of being uh, out, uh, you know, out of the loop and what it takes to be a real NHL player caught up with him and he died way too young. Now, actually my good friend Bo Shees had mentioned this and uh, I'd like to thank Bo for the suggestion. I saw Jacques Richard at his best with the Nordiques and I always thought there was something missing. It seemed like you could put in the points, he was a goal scorer, but he didn't seem to really enjoy hockey. There were some kind of demons around him, similar to the demons that Guilford had, but he could keep in control. But at one point, I considered Jacques Richard a top eight prospect in the NHL when he first came in. And again, the early 70s had a lot of people, Dale Talon, Underachieve, Gene Carr, a few other players like that. And let me, uh, let me tell you, it, uh, it's, amazing. it's amazing that people uh, nowadays don't remember Jacques Richard because when he was hot, he had uh, played one of the best line Quebec Major League Junior League history. But I think uh, the Nordiques were a good fit. But if the Nordiques couldn't solve them, solve them. I know Montreal couldn't solve them. And he drove, uh, he, Richard, when he was on, him and the Sashnies drove Montreal and Toronto into fits how good they were. And most of Richard's goals were cleanup goals, as we say, but he still had that knack around the ice. So on this uh, February day, we uh, keep uh, Jacques Richard in mind. Uh, the fact is, he had some bad times in his life, but he was a, a good player. Uh, he, he never reached his potential, but we should always recognize that not every, not every great player reaches their potential in the NHL, especially when they come in maybe immature or too young, like a lot of people, my media colleagues have said, Jacques was. So on this uh, beautiful day, we like to say keep your stick in the ice, and if you think of Jacques Richard, uh, say a little prayer. Because he would have lived, I think he would have been a good coach as well. He, uh, I can see any NHL team now could use his power play uh, teaching process. Have a good one. Bye.